Hey guys, it's Bart Johnson here, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about something that can be a little bit confusing for a lot of people, and I've seen a lot of confusion out there. Um, and I admit I was a bit confused as well before I went and did a little bit of research, and that's why I want to share it with you. And what we're going to be talking about is understanding the speeds and all the markings on SD cards, and specifically the speeds that you need to be looking for for video. Obviously, your media is the, you know, arguably the most important thing that you have in your setup. You could have a fantastic camera, but if your media isn't able to keep up with what your camera can record, you're going to have errors, you're going to lose footage, and sometimes it might just not record at all. So today I want to go through some of the markings and let you know some of the class ratings and how to figure out if you have the cards that are fast enough to shoot video on your camera. So I made a video on this exact subject actually uh, a few years ago now. It was actually one of my first educational videos that I put up on YouTube. I'll, uh, I'll put up a card so you can go ahead and check that out, but please be nice. It's one of my first ones. It's really not very good, but the information in there still holds true. I just thought that it could use a little bit of an update. Um, so while in that video I went over class ratings on SD cards and CF cards and I believe CFast cards were just being announced, today I want to specifically talk about the most common type, which is SD cards. So as I'm sure you guys have seen before, SD cards have various different markings all over them and to make it even a little bit more difficult to understand, a lot of times these markings do not carry across from brand to brand. For example, I have here some, uh, some SanDisk cards, and actually since the, they are both the same brand, but they still have some different markings and stuff on there, and you need to know what to look for and how to read these markings and understand what is important when choosing a card for video. So usually across the board from brand to brand, cards have a megabyte rating on them for their speed. Uh, for example, here, even just these Sandix, I have a uh, 45 megabyte, I have an 80 megabyte per second, I have a 95 megabyte per second. Um, now you would think that those numbers directly relate to how fast they can write video. Wrong. Unfortunately, the speeds that are usually listed on SD cards do not help us for video, and here's why. Those are the maximum write speeds of these cards, and companies love to advertise how fast the card can be. But for video, what we need to know is the minimum sustained write speed. We need to know that a card will not dip below a certain number of megabytes per second which would cause your video recording to either be corrupted or completely fail altogether. So knowing sort of the top speed of a card doesn't help us. We need to know how fast the card can maintain and where it won't dip below our recording needs. Luckily, there are some markings that can be found on SD cards that will tell us what the minimum sustained write speed of those cards are. You just have to know what to look for and how to read them. So these have traditionally been marked as either a UHS class or a speed class. And what's coming out now is a new standard, which is actually the V class rating, uh, V being the, the video speed. So let's take a look at what these markings look like and how to figure out how to read them. So one of the oldest ways to designate the minimum write speed of SD cards was the class system. And you can find this marking on some cards and it's usually a number marked inside of a C-shaped icon. And this one's actually really easy to read. Basically, that number that's inside that C is how many megabytes per second that that card can sustain a write speed of that. So a, a class 10, C10 card uh, can sustain 10 megabytes per second as its minimum. Um, older cards had lower ratings. We don't see much of them anymore, but there used to be um, class four and class six. And obviously those are way too slow for most video recordings these days. But then after the class system uh, started to max out, 
there was a new system implemented, which is called the UHS class. And this is designated on cards by a number inside of a little U shape. And this one is also just as simple to read. All you have to do is multiply that number by 10. So if you have a U1 card, that means that card is capable of a minimum write speed of 10 megabytes per second. Uh, a lot of times you'll see both a U1 and a, a class 10 rating because obviously they're the same, 10 megabytes per second. A lot of times you'll also see a U3 card. Now a U3 card is capable of maintaining 30 megabytes per second. So that's how you use the U rating. Now I don't want you guys to get mixed up when I say UHS class. I don't want you thinking of, you know, there's UHS class one and UHS class two. All those are referring to is actually the, the protocol and the number of pins that are on the back of the card. And those make the cards a little bit faster to write to and faster to offload, but they really have zero effect on the minimum sustained write speed of the card. So don't spend a whole bunch of money on a UHS class two card with the dual sets of pins if you really don't need it. Now the last and newest rating system is one that has just been implemented and you don't see it on many cards, but it is supposed to become the new standard and it's a V rating. So on some cards, you'll see a little V with a number right next to it. And that is supposed to be your, you know, your video write speed. And so the SD association is trying to push this out to all the companies and say, look, this is going to be our classification. You need to print this on your, on your media cards because people are getting so confused as to what they need and how fast things actually are. And the V rating is extremely simple. You look at the number next to the V and that is the minimum sustained write speed in megabytes per second. So a V30 card um, you will see is 30 megabytes per second minimum sustained write speed. Now, uh, right now, it's mostly V30 cards that you see out there. Um, I believe there's one or two brands that have V90 cards, uh, and there's a theoretical V60 card coming somewhere, but right now I haven't seen any from any manufacturers. Um, but we are going to be seeing these coming out, and actually we're going to need to see these cards coming out because there are some cameras being released that are going to need V60 or V90 cards, and I'll get to that in a little bit. Okay, so now you basically know how to read all those cryptic hieroglyphs and markings that are all over your SD cards, but now what are you supposed to do with that information? You have to be able to interpret that and compare it to uh, the write speeds of your camera and make sure that you can pair up the correct card for your camera and even for various codecs that your camera may be shooting at. It may shoot at different speeds. Now before we dive into that, here's where the math gets a little pain in the butt. So cards are rated with all those class ratings in megabytes, but most camera codecs are rated in megabits. They're not the same. One's a, one's a big B, one's a little B. Megabits, megabytes. So that's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it's really not a hard conversion to do. All you need to know is that there's eight bits in one byte. So what that means is, say you have a camera that records at 100 megabits per second. To convert that into bytes, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that number and you're gonna divide it by eight. So once you take that 100 megabits and divide it by eight to convert it into bytes, you get 12.5 megabytes per second. So what does that mean? That means that that codec on your camera of 100 megabits needs to be able to sustain 12.5 megabytes to make sure it doesn't have any recording errors. Now what this means is, if we go back to our class ratings, if you have a class 10 or a U1 card, they're only capable of maintaining 10 megabytes per second, so you run the risk of having errors. So what you would need to be safe is a U3 or V30 or even higher card, but the minimum that you should have to be safe is a U3 or a V30. 30 megabytes per second is greater than 12.5 megabytes per second and you've got plenty of overhead and you know you're gonna be safe and your card's never gonna have any errors while recording. 
So let's put this into actual practice with a, a camera. Um, right now, one of the cameras that's highly anticipated and is coming out is the Panasonic GH5. And the GH5 is supposed to have uh, a bunch of different codecs that you have options from internally. Now, at release, the highest bitrate that that camera is going to shoot in, in various codecs is 150 megabits per second. So if you went ahead and did that, 150, divide it by eight to convert it to bytes, you come up with 18.75 megabytes per second, which means that the GH5, in order to use any of the 150 megabit per second codecs that it's going to be shipping with uh, before all the firmware updates, you need a U3 or V30 card. A class 10 or a U1 card won't cut it and you run the risk of having errors and losing footage. You don't need a super, super fast UHS class two card with the extra pins. While the camera, the GH5 is capable of taking those, uh, it'll really, the only benefits you would see from those is when you're doing uh, bursts of photos and stuff like that. Those take advantage of those types of protocols, but you need to look at the minimum sustained write speed. And again, 18.75 megabytes per second is what the GH5 will do right out of the box when it ships. So that means you're going to only need a U3 or a V30 card, and there's plenty of them available out there. Now, I mentioned that there is uh, going to be a need in the future for V60 and V90 cards, which currently there aren't very many of, and I don't even know of any V60 cards. And there is a reason for this, and I'm going to use the GH5 again as an example. Now, in the summer of 2017, the GH5 is supposed to be getting a firmware update. And one of the features of that firmware update is that it's going to allow a codec where the camera shoots at 400 megabits per second. Now, that's some serious data. So what we need to do again to see if we have a car that's fast enough for that, take 400 divide it by eight to convert it to megabytes, and we come up with 50 megabytes per second. That means your V30 and U3 cards are no longer gonna cut it. You need something faster. So you need at least a V60 or V90 card. And Panasonic is saying that they're going to make their own versions of these cards available around the time of that firmware update, and I'm sure other manufacturers are close to pushing out cards of that speed as well but that's what you're going to need in order to record at a bit rate of around 400 megabits per second. So I hope that makes some sense. So guys, I'm sorry. I know that was a lot of information and a lot of numbers and a little bit of math, um, but I know this is something that I've seen a lot of people confused about. And I thought that in addition to the video that I did long, long ago, I thought this could use uh, a little bit of an update now that we have that video class rating uh, coming out and hopefully becoming standardized ac across all the brands. Hopefully they'll all adopt it and, and put it so we can clearly see what we are getting. Um, the good news is that some sites, when you go on there, you can go onto like B&H and for a lot of cards, even if it's not marked, they will show in the description what the minimum write speed is. And that's what you need to be looking at for video. If you want to take a look and get a little bit more information about all this and see where I got my graphics and charts regarding this, uh, go check out the SD Association's website regarding this. They have a lot of great information. It's really concise. And I'll put a link in the description down below so you guys can go ahead and, and read up on that a little bit more. But hopefully I broke it down and made it pretty simple for you. So guys, I hope this information helps you out and mainly I hope that it saves you from two things. I hope it saves you from having footage go corrupt or stop recording on you because you have a card that isn't fast enough for your camera. And two, I hope it saves you from spending way too much money on a card that is way too fast for what you need or a card that you're paying for other features that really don't affect you for video. Um, you can very easily spend almost double on some cards for that maximum write speed or UHS class two, and you might not need it. 
So I want to make sure that I get this information out there. And if uh, you feel like it and you thought this information was helpful, please feel free to share it around and uh, you know, like this video if it was helpful, dislike it if I went on too long and I'm just rambling and you really don't care, but I hope that's not the case. Um, and if you guys wanna keep up and uh, keep being updated when I release content like this, educational content, reviews and all sorts of stuff, please click that subscribe button and uh, click on that little notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I have a video go up. So guys, uh, I appreciate you spending your time with me and I'll see you next time.